I think claims analytics is literally the foundation upon which you should base a transformation in today's world. You're listening to Rethinking Insurance, a podcast series from Willis Towers Watson, where we discuss the issues facing PNC, life, and composite insurers around the globe, as well as exploring the latest tools, techniques, and innovations that will help you to rethink insurance. Hello, and welcome to Rethinking Insurance. I'm your host, Vittorio Magatti, and today I'm delighted to introduce a very interesting interview on claims analytics. The interview is taken from our 2020 Virtual Technology Expo and features Tom Elm, Head of Claims Consulting at Willis Towers Watson, with guests Grace Anson from Iscox and Sasha File from Woodmark. Enjoy. Hi, everybody. I'm Tom Helm, Head of Claims Consulting for Willis Towers Watson's Insurance Consulting and Technology Practice. In this session, we're discussing how the use of data and claims analytics can both strengthen your core business and help to transform the outcomes. Right now, I believe that claims operations are at the foothills of the great opportunity that advanced analytics presents and that its use within claims operations will be prolific within five years. Let's get the view of our guests on these matters. Our first guest is Grace Hansen, Chief Claims Officer for the global specialty insurer Hiscox. Prior to joining Hiscox, Grace led the global claims function at Allied World, and then subsequently served as corporate counsel and then chief claims officer at the insurtech business Homesite. Okay, Grace, uh, great to talk to you today um, about claims analytics, a topic I know that you're really passionate about. Um, and the claims is obviously going through a big digital transformation. Um, so Grace, I'm really keen to get your view on how important you believe the role of claims analytics is going to be as part of that transformation. Okay, well, first I would say, I don't think that it is um, a part of a transformation. I think claims analytics is literally the foundation upon which you should base a transformation in today's world. Um, analytics is essentially a, a, a porthole into the information about what's going on in your claims department um, operationally but it's even more importantly, um, a way to have insight into the loss experience of the company. The best data around loss experience is in the claims portfolio. Okay, and so what do you consider then are gonna be the key benefits, Grace, from, from claims analytics to, to, to an insurer? Well, I think as you digitize the pieces of information that you're gathering through the claims process, you can use those pieces of information to slice and dice them for a particular business type. So for instance, um, in one of my prior companies, we focused on monoline homeowners. There was a plethora of data um, that we were able to extract from the estimation process, which essentially not just told you in a high level what kinds of homes or roofs generated the highest loss exposure, but it also told you exactly what kinds of building materials um, potentially generated a high loss ratio, what types of um, environments, um, and conversely, which ones were the less expensive. So you could then actually make even more pristine pricing and risk selection decisions. But again, that information is buried in the claims file. So if we don't digitize it and capture it through analytics, it's it's of no value or of limited value. Mm -hmm. So you can see that pricing, underwriting, and actuarial teams are gonna get benefit from investment in claims analytics as well? Yes, absolutely. In fact, I think we have historically, companies have completely underestimated and under invested in claims in general and in claims analytics. Um, so it, for, for me, it's a personal mission, uh, in a sense, to wake people up to the value that's contained in this information and to also teach them that, you know, yes, if you have the right tools, the right, right foundations, the right technology, you can harness that information effectively for all parts of your business to be more profitable, more efficient, um, and more effective and impactful for the customer. Okay, and so do you have a sense, Grace, of where you think we are as an industry 
kind of on the journey of, of using analytics? <laughs> Not very far. I mean, I think claims analytics has sort of tended to fall into two buckets. One I call just flat operational reporting. You know, how many claims have you, you know, closed today? How fast, when? Um, and then maybe the other bucket, which is a little bit more sophisticated, is where you have actuaries maybe embedded in a claims department and they report on certain patterns. But for instance, evolving methods of reserving now key off of certain points in time on the claims lifecycle. We now have stochastic reserving, which is pulling sort of unstructured data elements um, and variables to generate more pristine reserving, all of which um, I think, again, originate, it's a more sophisticated view of claims analytics. So if I had to say between zero and 10, I'd put most companies below five, some <laughs> down to two. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a few limited companies, you know, moving moving above five, but I th think the industry as a whole is below five. Yeah, and Grace, I know you take a lot, of, pay a lot of attention to what's going on outside in other industries outside of insurance. Are there particular areas or industries that you look at that you think, well, they're more advanced in uh, the use of analytics, and that's kind of the direction of travel for for claims. Yeah, I mean, I think of two uh, areas where I've been quite interested. One, surprisingly, might be the medical arena. You know, so for instance, I was in Boston for a long time and the Harvard Medical Group uh, went completely digital with all their medical records. Um, and they, they were able to build a number of really interesting products. One is a complete life cycle, the patient visit, you know, follow up, medicine, history. Um, but then they were also able to distill that, anonymize it, and use it for predictive purposes, which patients are going to have which diseases. Um, there's a lot of uh, interesting work in the medical field around invoicing and services and billing, um, all of which I think, you know, are very useful for us. Um, the other area is, of course, the obvious, the Amazons of the world, which have learned to use, you know, customer profiling and delivery and digital tools to more effectively reach and service the customer. And claims has a lot to learn from them as well, which customers want which journey, because customers tend to want um, an omni-channel type of experience. And so understanding which customers want which part of that experience and when, um, for instance, simple example is catastrophes. People tend to move more digitally um, versus a non-catastrophe. They might phone up and you know have a conversation, right? So. Mm -hmm. Um, you have to be able to understand kind of the the, um, the behavioral patterns of customers. And I think the retail space, the Amazons have a lot to offer us um, in terms of learnings. And do you think claims will journey down that hyper-personalization kind of approach that the likes of Amazon and, and so on are taking to really understand what their customers, individual customers' needs and preferences are? I think eventually for the companies where that makes sense for their business. Mm -hmm. The insurance industry, someone once told me there were like 2,500 insurance companies in America, which just shocked me. Mm -hmm. And it, it was because there's a lot of really small ones. And for small ones, maybe it's not important for them to do mm -hmm. that, a really narrow profile. For the medium to large ones, I think it's an imperative. Um, you know, you have to you have to go along that journey or you're not going to be competitive because someone else is going to do that for you. Mm -hmm. And as someone who's in deployed claims analytics into the um, into the function successfully, what do you see as the critical success factors um, that other insurers should be thinking about for for deployment of, of claims analytics? Well, there's not one factor. There's probably kind of a little bit of a jigsaw puzzle. Mm -hmm. um, the first is you have to have the right talent in your department. Um, you you must invest in that talent. Because if you don't have people who know how to analyze things, they won't understand data and they won't know what you need in order to do claims analytics. I think second, you need to have a data strategy. So simple example, because people, when I say that, people are always like, oh, that's not a claims thing. But a very, very simple example is in one of my last roles, we knew fraud could be modeled really early on. And so we segregated our fraud data. Simple thing. We just pulled claims that had potential fraud signs aside, and we track them digitally in, in their journey. We were able to use that data to then build our internal proprietary fraud model, which we you know, then continuously upgraded. So 
I think you need people who understand that. You need the ability to capture that. Um, so the systems, the technology um, absolutely will follow um, in order to allow you to do that. Okay. Lovely. Thank you. Um, and um, just, sorry, Grace, so, um, do you think that the impact of COVID is going to lead to an acceleration in the digitalization of claims um, and therefore greater use of analytics? I think it will definitely lead to the further digitization of claims um, because I view digital as electronic delivery, which I know we've been doing for a while, but clearly now we know we need to work remotely. We need things to be accessible remotely. Um, whether it leads to more claims analytics, I, I think that's going to depend on the business and its willingness to invest in, in that area. Um, yeah. Okay. Um, and what, what do you think about the, the impact of analytics on the role of the claims handler? What do you think the future looks like for, for the claims handlers as, as we embrace more analytics into the processing of claims? I would hope it would make it more fun. Um, it's, it seems to me we have we've used our poor claims adjusters to be, you know, record keepers, uh, data analysts, uh, uh, you know, administrative assistants. I mean, they've done all, they have done not a whole lot of the actual interesting part of adjusting claims, using their judgment, negotiating, um, devising strategy. Uh, my, my hope is these tools, as they're embedded in the claims process, will take away the part of the job that isn't very much fun and will allow us to use our intellect and our judgment um, as accordingly. Great. And, and Grace, just to clarify, how, how high up the, your agenda is claims analytics in, in your world at Hiscox in terms of on your strategic agenda? <laughs> Well, right now, you you know that that's a cheating question. <laughs> uh, as you know, uh, data analytics is my number one priority. Um, I think, as I said at the very beginning, um, if you don't know what's going on, if you can't share what's going on in a meaningful, robust way with its underwriting, with actuarial, um, your company ultimately won't be successful. It may not happen immediately, but it will absolutely happen. So. I have done everything I can to, to build the internal support for a data strategy and agenda, um, and we're we're moving along that journey. Um, brought in really strong people in that area, and now we're building the tools and bringing in the technology to let us do more interesting and exciting things. Grace, thank you so much for joining us on this session. Your insight is, is fantastic and really appreciated. Oh, thank well. you. Really appreciate being asked to speak on a topic I am passionate about. So thank you for inviting me. Okay, fantastic insights and thoughts from Grace. Our next guest is Sasha Furl. Sasha is the CEO for the consultancy firm Voidmark. Prior to this, Sasha was the Advanced Analytics Director for RSA's Nordic region, where he spent over a decade leading technical teams in the delivery of advanced analytics solutions, including in the claims function. Okay, Sasha, great that you could join us for this claims analytics session. Thank you so much. Um, Sasha, as someone who's involved in delivering advanced analytics across the insurance value chain, I'm keen to understand how much work you think there is and how much change is likely to be from the work that you're doing in the actual claims function itself. So, um, yeah, as you know, I mean, I've been working as director of advanced analytics and um, with uh, several teams. And I think uh, claims analytics is the interesting area where you really want to spend a lot of time. I mean, we have traditionally been working a lot with uh, pricing and, and, and analytics around that, but where you can make a, a big change, I think, is, is claims analytics and not only in, in, in fraud, which is probably the first thing you think about, but I mean, there are a lot of different areas. Okay, and that, that's what. What are some of those opportunities that you think are out there? Then, sort of beyond fraud, what do you see that the industry is going to be doing by leveraging um, some of the benefits the industry is going to get by leveraging analytics within the claims function? Yeah, so I would say um, there are um, essentially uh, three different areas. I mean, there are areas around efficiency, where you try to improve the processes, and now that we have. Uh, gone through uh, digitization, so we have moved from from manual and and analog processes to to having everything database. Uh, there's a 
great opportunity to to improve this. The second area is, as you, as you mentioned, um, fraud. And the third is probably everything that you can do on top of the data that you get out of the claims process. So this would be um, improving uh, data quality, using the, the, the features and, and what you can build and, and modeling on top of this data to inform other areas um, to, to help um, your other functions in, in an insurance company. So have there been some key developments in the advancements of analytics and technology in recent years that now make it possible to make greater use of predictive analytics in claims? Yeah, so I think in general the, the area of analytics has matured so much that your your models and your masses can be applied in, in, in claims and we have learned in which areas um, predictions works, in which areas classifications work and, and now we are at a point where you can use this in, in claims with a lot of benefits as well. And how important has it been to be able to tap into some of the unstructured data? Are you finding there's a lot of value in the unstructured data? Absolutely. But I think it's a it's a development, so you shouldn't start with models or, or work where you have where you where you use all the sophisticated sources from the beginning. So in, in, in terms of uh yeah, fraud models or in other models, I mean you, you should be using your your basic or your standard data and then you um enrich them and improve your models um all all the time in order to to, to use this kind of data as well. Okay, and then from a sort of from a techno technology point of view, um, what what in your experience are some of the key components that need to be in an insurer's technology stack um, in, in order for them to consider analytics implementations? Yeah. The I think the technology is. Uh, where you really should try to diversify and make sure that you have different ways to to uh, deliver your your models. So um, on the one side, you need uh, uh, like a standard purpose uh, way to express models and to, to to deliver them. But on the other hand, you need um, a, an environment to be able to to train them in a in a um, yeah, efficient way. So I think um, what has changed and what people have to have to have in place is um, the data quality to have a, a good way a technology um, that allows you to have um, high quality data, and on the other hand to 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 build um, an infrastructure that allows you to to develop those um, at, to to support and to deploy those models. And you've been involved in deploying models though, so that they respond using technology in, in real time. How advantageous is it to have a kind of a platform where you can place models and have them um, interacting with some of your mainframe systems in real time? Do you think that's going to be the technology ecosystem? Yeah, again, I think um, you have to, to take this step by step. So you want to have uh, solutions that allow you to do both the uh, offline uh, modeling and offline um, uh, execution, um, but then you want to go in the next step into uh, the in a way to do this um, in, in in real time and also to integrate to other real time sources. So not only to use your real time source uh, in internal data, but also to have an integration. And where do you think we are in terms of kind of like some of the machine learning capabilities that we were using? Is are we is machine learning happening all the time or is it machine learning being done offline to train the models and then to bring them back online and, and kind of regularly refresh them? Or is it an, an ongoing use of machine learning? And where do you think we are in that that position right now? From from my experience, <laughs> um, it has been like a struggle to really um, get the the rest of the business on board. Um, right. I mean, I do think we have the technology to have online improvement, online um, optimization of models. Um, uh, it, you, there are areas where where the, where the business has accepted to to implement them. Um, in 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 claims, I don't know if we are really there yet. Mm -hmm. And in terms of the kind of um, project teams that you're pulling together and so on, when you're doing and building solutions for claims, how important have you found it to have claims people in the room and 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 form part of that project team? Yeah. 
So uh, I think it's not only a question of having claims people when you form the project. Um, again, I think it's a important that it's an iterative process. So you want to have your, your, your claims people and not only your claims people, also other disciplines in, in claims to, to look at um, the, 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 the targets you're setting, the way you want to, to, to solve this problem and to have them with you during the uh, total project and also in, in, um, in, a, in a yearly cycle and to evaluate and to make sure that you, that you can improve. Again, I think it's important that you don't start with the most complicated model. Um, you want to start this easy and you want to have um, the development of a model as a part of the education as well for the rest of the business. So you want to involve them throughout the process. And as somebody who's led advanced analytics teams in the delivery of some of this work, what kind of skills have you found it necessary to have on your team? Is it a multidisciplinary approach that you need to have? And, and what are those kind of skills that, that, you, that you need to have at your disposal? Yeah, so um, in, in the project setup, I think it's important to have uh, a lot of disciplines. Um, it's not only uh, a question of uh, developing and 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 uh, supplying those models. It's also a question of I mean who's been a, who's able to to interpret the results, who is using the results and and um, putting them into the into, into the process. And on the other hand, you also need a lot of expert input. So you want to have um, experienced people that 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 tweak your models and that um, improve the way you. Uh, train train those models okay and um so do you believe that the the use of analytics and the general sort of broader digitalization of claims um it's going to lead to to like the full automation of the claims process do you think that's where we're heading and i think we're absolutely heading to uh, like a 99 percent of optimization it's probably not only the um, analytics uh, behind it um from my experience, I mean, we have three different areas. We have the system optimization, where you um, use your technology, your IT technology. You have an RPA um, process where you look at how are you yeah, using um, um, robots to, to improve the process. And then you have the analytics, which needs to be integrated with all, all the, the both of them, because um, all the three um, disciplines together will allow you to to, to get to, I would say, like 99% of optimization of, of the process. Right, okay, wow. And uh, from a, you mentioned data quite a bit um, through through the discussion that we've had. So how important is that, that having a good claims data strategy, um, you know, for, for the delivery of analytics? In, um, in early years, we have, uh, taking a lot of shortcuts to to automate and to make uh, to to ha get uh, efficiency gains and this has led to to uh, to um, to poor data in a lot of areas so um, I think it's really important that we focus on improving data quality in claims um, both investing time in um, getting this data, but also uh, investing analytics to improve data quality in, in order to um, yeah, categorize data um, or model based um, if you don't have the categorization from your claims handler. So I think there are a lot of different ways how you can use uh, analytics not only to, 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 to build models and to, to work with processes, but also to improve data quality. Okay, and that's interesting. And so by kind of shortcuts or efficiency, you kind of mean there's been perhaps less data captured um, than there could otherwise have been. And actually, it would be quite a good thing to invest the time to for the claims handlers to be capturing that information because it becomes an asset for the business. Is that is that? Yeah, that's what I mean. From? And I also think you don't need to capture the same data everywhere. So you can use analytics in order to um, differentiate in which areas do you need to capture more data and which areas don't you uh, need this, this data. So you, you don't have to get rid of all your efficiency gains. I mean, you, you can um, very specific find the areas where you want to improve your data quality. Um, so for those insurers that are starting out on this journey, how do they work out where, where to start? Do you have any tips for them in this regard? Yeah, as I mentioned earlier, I think you want to start um, iteratively. So you want to start with um, 
small solutions. You want to start with things where you are quite sure that you will get the benefits that you are expecting. Um, there are a lot of low hanging fruits in, in some areas. Um, it almost seems like uh, stupid. Why shouldn't you uh, go for those? I mean, there are areas where you can identify um, cases that uh, you want to uh, work with in recovery. Um, and I think, uh, I mean, obviously fraud is a typical area where you want to. Um, we had a lot of success when we looked at um, identifying um, events. So mm -hmm. uh, what kind of claims do you want to do? You want to include or do you want to to give as a um, data to your to a reinsurer? Um, so I think a lot of uh, cases w which are um, limited in um, in the, the the questions that you ask and don't involve too uh, complicated models, um, uh, but give you uh, quite some benefits from the beginning. Mm -hmm. And so can you get, even if you haven't got all the data for, across all of your um, data mart or your data store, um, can you still get going in some areas of, of claims analytics? Can you be working on both aspects, improving your data, whilst also get going with some of the iterative kind of approach that you've mentioned? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, if you're looking at claims processes and you know, you know that you could improve just like a percentage somewhere, um, uh, building building a model for this and, and implementing this is it's going to be a, a, a huge gain in a big organization. So if you have limited data, I mean, go for the small improvements somewhere and 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 um, uh, deploy those models. And Sasha, what what about reinsurers? Do you think that there is um, opportunities for for them to benefit from in the investment on claims analytics? And and if so, what what kind of uh, examples would you give for in that regard? Yeah, I, w I would say this is a um, great opportunity for reinsurers to work together with insurance companies, um, both in, in terms of um, what kind of um, features that should they be looking for and also um, making sure that they get more data than they did earlier because I mean the, 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 the way we communicated traditionally with the insurers was very limited and was just specific around your, your contract um, but there are so much um, richness in the, in, the, in the data and for reinsurance um, this allows them to to have a better prediction of, um, of, of, of trends and um, be more proactive so I think that's absolutely a, a big area of interest. Brilliant. Sasha, thank you so much for joining us for this session. It's really appreciated. Well, thanks to our great guests for their views. Let's wrap up with the three key takeaways from this session. Firstly, claims data and analytics can provide valuable new insights to benefit pricing, claims, underwriting and reserving teams. Secondly, claims data and analytics can help to transform your claims processing and deliver faster and better outcomes. And finally, to recognise that a number of insurers are already on this journey. They're getting early benefits from the output and they're likely to accelerate their deployment. So you risk being left behind if claims analytics is not already on your roadmap. Tom, Grace, Sasha, I really appreciate the pragmatic way, but also the view that you shared in this interview on the claims management and claims analytics. Moreover, I would thank the audience for listening to the Rethinking Insurance podcast. Bye. Thank you for joining us for this Willis Towers Watson podcast. For more information, visit the Insights section of WillisTowersWatson.com.